Ireland is steeped in centuries of dark folklore, from the Banshee to fairies, to Celtic spirits and other tales of the supernatural. But nothing has fascinated me more than in the infamous story of a phantom black cat that supposedly haunts the countryside and surrounding areas in Killaquay, brought on possibly due to the dark events that took place at the infamous Hellfire Club, which still stands to this day. Join us as we set out to kill a key house to come face to face with the infamous painting of the black cat of kill a key, Ireland's most haunted object. Right, is everybody in? I decided to bring my assistant Slimer due to his expertise in the paranormal. Now all that was left to do was to type the address into the sat nav and lift my bodies. We stopped for some food at Apple Greens, but it took ages to get served because this match was on. Sorry ladies, I hope you did well, but we had to haul ass. I don't mind paying the border toll uh, to go down south because they actually invested in the roads and the roads are great, great quality, there's no potholes, no bits of road missing, it's great. Whereas the tax in Northern Ireland, it of course goes towards the roads and instead ends up in the pockets of a bunch of politicians who don't want to work. Half an hour away from Killakee, and we're going to the Stewart House. Uh, and that house is the most haunted object in all of Ireland, the painting of the Killakee cat. So we're very lucky to get the opportunity to go in and see it privately. So half an hour and we'll soon see. So after a good two and a half hour drive, we had finally arrived at Killakee House. We had finally arrived at the notorious Killakee House, said to be one of the most haunted houses in all of Ireland. The buildings you see are the steward's house and stables, which acted as a gate lodge to the Grand Mansion owned by Irish politician Lord Massey, as seen pictured here. The mansion has long since been abandoned and all that is left in Massey Woods are some ruins. The house has been central to some really dark occurrences. There have been murders, occult activities carried out by members of the Hellfire Club and numerous reports of high level poltergeist activity at the property over the years. The purpose of our journey was to visit the Killakee Cap painting and learn about the reported paranormal activity at the gatehouse. However, to fully understand the reasons that make the house such a hive for paranormal activity, we must first learn about the Hellfire Club. The steward's house sits at the bottom of Montpellier Hill. At the top of this hill lies the stone ruins of the Hellfire Club. Despite the lush woodlands and spectacular view of Dublin, Making this a popular spot for hikers and walkers, the history of the location is quite the opposite. It is dark, gruesome and macabre. We began the steep walk up Montpellier Hill to visit the ruins of the Hellfire Club. So unfit and out of breath. The area you see here was the site of a cairn, an ancient burial ground. However, Irish Speaker of the Commons, William Connolly, had other ideas for the land when he decided to make it the home of his new hunting lodge, dating back to 1725. Using stones from the cairn, Connolly constructed the Hellfire Club. Soon after the lodge roof blew off, it was believed to be the work of the devil, or retribution for disturbing the ancient burial site. 
The club became a hangout for Ireland's secretive high society and elite. It is said that their deeds were among the most depraved imaginable. Fueled by alcohol, orgies, murder, sacrifice and occult rituals, there is no doubt that such a dark history has made this area a paranormal hotspot. It was also said that members of the Hellfire Club brutally tortured to death a dwarf. A dwarf's remains were later found back in the 70s in the bell tower of Killikey House. The club also shares a similar story to that of Loftus Hall in County Wexford where it is said that a hooved figure believed to be the devil himself stopped by for a game of cards. It is this next piece of lore which brings together the connection between the Hellfire Club and the Black Cat of Killikey. There are two stories regarding black cats and their connection to the Hellfire Club. Some say members doused black cats in whiskey and set them ablaze as some form of twisted entertainment. Others say that a seat was always reserved at the table of the Hellfire Club for a black cat who would become a host for their dark master from another realm. It is said that a priest once visited the club inquiring on the disappearance of a local man. When he arrived he was shocked to find a large black cat sat at the head of the banquet table surrounded by the club's members. The priest suspected that this was no mere cat so he began to exorcise it. The cat howled out in pain and took off across the table knocking over candles and causing the club to burn down. It is said that the club used the steward house for the remainder of their time together where they continued their dark and ghastly deeds. So, with that brief knowledge of the Hellfire Club, let's make our way back down the hill to the Killikey House where we will now go inside to meet the Black Cat of Killikey. For a more detailed history of Killikey House and the Hellfire Club, please check out my friend Courtney's video over on her page Shit Tourist for more information. We are here at the Killikey House where there has been rumours of a haunted demonic cat terrorising the locals. We are going to go inside and meet the cat face to face. The house has seen its fair share of tragedy and bloodshed. In this clock tower they found the remains of a dwarf back in the 70s dating back hundreds of years and it was rumoured that this dwarf was killed as part of a sadistic act by members of the Hellfire Club. The house is alleged to have been the site of a murder in the early 1900s there have been sightings of a pair of ghostly nuns on the staircase. Numerous occupants and guests have reported feeling a strange and disturbing presence at the house. And then of course there are tales of sightings of the legendary and mysterious black cat of Killikey. When the house was under the ownership of Mrs O'Brien there were many reports of poltergeist activity. Items were thrown around and smashed there were knocks in the night, and there were sounds of someone in the house, despite no one being there other than Mrs. Bryan. During renovations in the 1960s, workmen there were witness to bizarre and strange events. They became so scared that they didn't want to continue their work. There were reports of many apparitions, and of course sightings of a large black cat with red eyes. One night during the renovations, 
Artist Tom McCassey and the workmen were greeted by a mysterious man at one of the doors to the property. The man demanded that the door remains closed and then simply transformed into a large snarling black cat with red eyes. The workmen left in fear, terrified for their lives, and didn't return to finish their work. McCassey painted what he had seen that night, and that became the Black Cat of Killakee, the painting that we had come down to see. Things got so bad that an exorcism was carried out, but it didn't take long for sightings and reports of paranormal activity to start up again. The locals say the painting is cursed. It is said that it is bad luck to look into its eyes for an extended period of time, and it is rumoured that turning the painting upside down summons the beast, and any time that this has been done, the paranormal activity at the house has become its most powerful. Given the Hellfire Club's dark reputation for torturing cats and using them as part of their rituals, I can't help but think that the black cat is a symbol of the mistreatment of black cats due to superstition, and that whatever is haunting this house, or pretending to be the black cat, is something much more sinister. Be sure to keep an eye out for part 4, where we conduct a series of simple tests, and get what may be our first piece of paranormal evidence. We started out with a quick EVP session in that there's a spirit of the Killakee cat on this premises. If you want to communicate with us, speak into this box that's in my hand. That's all you have to do. Would you be able to do something with one of the candles on the table? Can you make one flicker? Make one flicker? Make one flicker? Make one flicker? In this room, is there anyone here with us? Have you heard of the Hellfire Club? Have you heard of the Hellfire Club? Is there an explanation for these voices we picked up? Or are these the sounds of some disembodied spirits in the Killakee House? Anyone familiar with Loftus Hall in Wexford will have heard the story of the devil playing cards with the residents. When the residents picked up the cards from under the table, they seen that he had hooves, and he took off through the roof in a pillar of fire. Strangely, this story also repeats itself with the Hellfire Club, and anybody that has heard of the Hellfire Club might know that this house was used as a base. So, I'm going to use cards from Loftus Hall, and I'm going to set them down to see if anything here can make the connection. But I'm just hoping that the link between the two might cause some activity. It was here where we caught some strong EMF activity. Just use your energy. Strangely, our most compelling piece of evidence was caught after our investigation, but first, a few thoughts so far. This is just a painting, I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but if this is just a painting, for the sake of argument, it still raises the question, why was the Hellfire Club torturing and burning cats? What, what, what did cats ever do wrong? You know, cats are very spiritual creatures. Um, if there was any animal that potentially could act as hosts for something from the other world, it probably would be a cat. But uh, you look at the picture, and you know it's nearly like a sad, um, and that's symbolic, I guess, of, of 
what they suffered and still do to this day. People people associate black cats with bad luck and anybody and I know that when I see black cats, they're lovely, they're great, but people still have a superstition with them and people are still bad with them at Halloween and it's just wrong. So if it's not real, it's symbolic. And if it is real, it's very sad to think the black cat was used for these evil occult practices. Or if it even worse, was tortured. Um, so I guess when we go to the hellfire club, there's a few more questions there. And for anybody watching, I don't have any answers. I didn't know. I don't know if anything will happen. Will anything happen if we were here all day? I don't know. We're just investigating. It's as simple as that. Just days ago, we travelled to the beautiful Killakee in Rathfarnham to visit the infamous Killakee House. Located at the bottom of Montpellier Hill, there are three areas of interest. The house itself, the notorious Hellfire Club at the top of the hill, and the eerie massy woods that surrounds this house. All three areas being steeped in dark histories spanning back centuries, we decided to go down and visit the area for ourselves. I came face to face with the one and only Black Cat of Killakee. As somebody with a curiosity for the unexplained, and also being a self-confessed cat enthusiast, it makes sense that this story stands out to me. We are not experienced paranormal investigators. We visited the site and we carried out a basic set of tests to see if there was any interaction between the painting and ourselves. Amazingly, when we were reviewing our footage, it was after the investigation when I was taking a picture of myself with the famous painting that we noticed something in the background in the mirror. The door that you see leads out into the hall and there was nobody there. We can debunk this as being an object outside of the door because it doesn't appear in any of the other photos which were taken in quick succession. So that begs the question, just who or what is this standing in the doorway as we are with the haunted painting? We would like to thank Shay Murphy and Ross Farrell for their help and hospitality in making this possible. And we would like to remind everyone that black cats, just like all cats, are awesome. And despite any superstitions or stories that you may have heard about, including the ones in this video, be good to black cats, be good to all animals, because they are awesome. Thanks for watching. If you could do that thing that people do on social media, like, follow, share, comment, Block, report, whatever it is, do it, do it now!